Ah, I am joined by Karate Combat Middleweight Champion Ross Turbo Levine. Ross, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Happy Sunday. Yeah, happy Sunday. Um, man, big things on the horizon for you. You're going for champ champ status. Yes, sir. Karate Combat 43 this Friday in Las Vegas. You're taking on Sam Alvey, UFC veteran for Casey's inaugural heavyweight title. Kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for it, man. It's a big opportunity for me to kind of show what I'm worth, and uh, I look forward to putting on a great show on Friday. Yeah, it's going to be a banger. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, but you're not just a prize fighter. So I, I did a little bit of research, and I, I understand uh, you have a doctorate in physical therapy. Are you kidding that's me? Right. No, sir, that's it. That's my that's my real job. And then you know, my, uh, the, the Clark Kent stuff comes off and I'm a prize fighter as well as like my side gig. Funny to think that like a professional fighter does that as their side gig. Usually it's like something else is the side gig, but yeah, man, uh, I've been, uh, I've had my doctorate now almost 10 years and, wow. um, I've worked in clinic at a bunch of different places. And, um, as of last July, so it's been about a year and a half now, I opened my own business called Turbo Sports Performance, and I work almost exclusively with martial artists, combat athletes, just uh, on the rehab side, on the strength and conditioning side. I've got a great team behind me of coaches. So, yeah, man, we're doing the damn thing. It's growing and, and just yeah. uh, helping people all over the world, man. It's super fun. Wow. Congratulations. That's awesome, man. Thank you. That's, uh, Thank you. You're, Thank you're you. living like so many different dreams at the same time. I love it. <laughs> I'm it's trying inspiring. my best, man. It's Thank definitely you. inspiring. Appreciate that. Man, so and like I don't know if I can think of a better job to have while you're also a professional athlete than mm. knowing the ins and outs of physical therapy. Like, yeah, true. It, it helps, man. It definitely helps. Um, I would say the biggest thing that it really helps me with is learning when to push harder and when to pull back, and knowing my body so well and figuring out, okay, is this an injury or am I just a little sore, or do I need to like suck it up and keep going? Because th there is a fine line. And I think 99% of combat athletes always err on the side of like, just keep going, just keep pushing. And that's when you usually either get sick or injured or, or something weird happens in your camp. So uh, having that background and being able to pretty much disting distinguish like what's what when it comes to my body is super helpful. Yeah. And uh, just staying healthy. Um, you, How long have you been doing martial arts? Pretty much your whole life, right? Yeah, since I was seven, man. So martial arts has been in my life since I was seven years old. Um, yeah, just building, 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 and now obviously professional fighting. So for sure, long time. Did you ever think when you first started training that you would get paid to do karate, essentially? No, no, definitely not. You know, it's funny. When I was a kid, I, I really didn't even want to do karate. Um, martial arts wasn't on my radar. I always thought I was going to be like a professional baseball or football player. Uh, I, I never thought I would be in the position I'm at today. And then, yeah, just one thing led to another, man. I just really got sucked into the martial arts and the competitive side of things. And then, of course, my own injuries led me to being in physical therapy and just really enjoying that side of it as well. And uh, I'm very fortunate where I've been able to marry the two together. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, mm. So you kind of saw the UFC come in and kind of, because there was a long time where karate was one of the the top martial arts out there. You know, if sure. anyone wanted to get into a martial art, oh, you go do karate. And then the UFC came around, and jujitsu kind of was on the rise. Um, mm. And I, and a lot of traditional martial arts kind of took a back seat. Um, sure. And things changed. Machida came around and put karate back on the map when he won a UFC title. Mm. But during that period, did you ever? Was there ever any times where you felt like you had to defend karate? Cause I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people like, Oh, that doesn't work. It's not, it's not real. It's not practical. Yeah. Jitsu and boxing and you know, those <laughs> guys. I don't think so. You know, I, I never felt like I had to defend what I did. Um, you know, my friends were always really cool with, with all the stuff that I did. They, they supported me and I either would come watch me or just like cheer for me from home. Even when I was going doing like the point karate tournaments at, with uh, the sport karate, but no, I, I never feel like I needed to defend it. But I also, so here's the thing though. I also always trained like some boxing, some kickboxing. So there was always some stuff going on behind the scenes because, you know, like just as you see, like in the Olympics, right? 
the guy gets disqualified for knocking somebody out. It's right. like this stuff ain't even practical. So I think at the end of the day, I, I recognize that like, okay, this, this game of tag, which that's what it is, you know, it's a high paced, very high risk game of tag is sport karate. But is that the end all be all? Like, will this keep me safe in the street? And the answer is no. You know, so there was always some stuff behind the scenes that I was doing to take care of myself just from a, I need to be able to defend myself type of standpoint. And then when it comes to sport, the the things that you learn from sport karate, the distance management, the timing, the explosiveness, the angles and footwork, you know, not being uh, as easy to hit, you start blending that in with all the other full contact. And now all of a sudden you become a dangerous weapon. Yeah, I made a... Uh, uh... The top five karate combat knockouts for bloody elbow and mm. you were in two of the top five <laughs> thank uh, you and that's before they even switched over to the new four ounce gloves kc changed mm. things up now and now they have smaller <laughs> gloves are you excited to get to use the smaller amount of leather now yeah for sure i mean it's really that's not too much of a difference you know when we're talking we're talking like two ounces you, you hit someone clean with uh you know a 10 ounce glove or a six ounce glove or a four ounce glove they're they're going down um i, I really pride myself more on the precision than the, than the like crazy knockout power like yeah obviously i've got finishes um all across my career and, and highlights with different weapons with my hands with my feet with my knees so i know i can finish people i know i've got stopping power um but it's really the, the speed the precision the timing of everything that i think makes me super effective and and more dangerous than most yeah, I mean, I think we've been seeing more knockouts since they've uh, mm. switched over to the new glove. And, you know, that kind of brings in the eyeballs. And, like, that's kind of the thing about combat sports is you really have to have the sport and the spectacle. It's it's yeah. really hard for combat sports to thrive without it for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, what do you think, uh, like, if it were you, like, how would you, how do you navigate or how do you think karate combat should navigate the traditional side of things with, bringing in the eyeballs and generating the hype and, and that side of things. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we don't have to like the, when karate combat first started, it was really cool because it grabbed a new wave of followers. You know, the people who were traditionalists and karate purists and were showing them like, Hey, we can really be effective. However, I think I said this in an interview a long time ago, but the more karate combat exists, the less we're going to actually associate karate with the like the rule set and the the athletes as well like i don't think too many people look at me and say oh he's a karate athlete or he's a karate fighter you know do i have that as my base for sure but i'm also an established kickboxer now i'm established with a small ounce glove so you know it's like we're crossing all these different platforms and i think combat is combat it becomes more about the rule set than what it actually is so yeah, I, I don't think, um, you know, I like the eyeballs and I like that we're evolving. And I do like what um, the new president, you know, awesome is saying about like, you know what, if, if these karate purists don't like that kickboxers and MMA fighters and bare knuckle fighters are coming in and fighting in this rule set, well, then we need to level up. The karate guys, the karate traditionalists and the purists need to start evolving their karate so it becomes effective. So um, at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, fighting within this particular rule set. So you know, that's really all that matters when it comes to the eyes on the sport. Fair enough. That's a, that's a fantastic answer. I think mm. it's a, not an easy thing to navigate, you know, right. Cause you want, you want to dance with the one that brought you, but at the same time you have to grow. Yeah. You got to evolve. You got to evolve. I mean, think about the UFC. If it, if it was still what it was at UFC one, you would get all these different guys trying to vie for what's the best when in reality, what's the best is the combination of all of those fighters. So, right. you know, all of those different styles. So I think karate combat is, is evolving to that as well. And ideally it'll evolve even faster than the UFC did because we've already seen what's paved the way. So now it's just, we're in catch up mode, just figuring out what, what we want the product to look like. I say we, as in like the karate combat executives, like what do we want karate combat to look like? And then how do we get the right people behind it to fight that rule set and make it look extravagant? And here we are with you taking on Sam Alvey, right? Damn it's, it's a UFC guy versus the karate combat champion. Does, mm -hmm. does that put any pressure on you? Like, do you feel like you have to represent the karate side of things? No, not at all. Not at all. It's at the end of the day, it's me versus Sam. 
You know, I don't, I don't think Sam is entering this saying like, he's got to hold it down for his former organization. Like, right. You know, it is what it is, but in my eyes, yes, he is more of a household name than I am. And I would like to absorb that from him by, you know, putting him away in, in beautiful fashion. Right. So uh, there's no more pressure on this fight than any other fight. At the end of the day, you got to win. So winning is the only thing that matters. It's the only thing people respect. It's the only thing people talk about. So, you know, I got to go out there and win and then all the rest of that stuff will trickle down and, and it'll affect me the way that I want it to. Uh, speaking of affecting you, uh, you don't have to cut as much weight this time. And that's always yeah. a blessing, right? How's how's yeah. how's fight week? You're here. What does it feel like compared mm -hmm. to having to cut down to middleweight? It's different. Uh, you know, it's it's funny because I was just telling this to our buddy Mallory Woods yesterday, but not cutting weight has made my camp significantly more challenging. And what I mean by that, not not challenging as a sense of like, oh, I have all these things to worry about, but challenging in the intensity because typically when you are looking to cut weight uh the last like three to four weeks you start to taper things down you're not going as intense in your sessions because we know there's a risk of either hurting yourself or getting sick because we're starting to pull down and, and deplete so that we can make weight so now that we don't have to worry about that i'm eating a crazy amount of calories so my macros are like through the roof right now which means every single training session for the last, uh, I mean, I'm always training, but the last like 10 to 12 weeks, even before I knew I was fighting Sam, we've just been smoking these training sessions and it's been a lot of hard work. We had anticipated moving up to 205. So I've been working with big bodies the entire camp. You know, a couple of people like Steve Walker is the lion fight uh, cruiserweight world champion. So he walks around like 235 and he's massive, like tall southpaw. So it works out great. Uh, Jorgen DeCastro, another former UFC fighter, is a heavyweight. He's like 270, 265, but super, super athletic, um, you know, has one punch knockout power. So he's been a huge help for me. Um, John McNeil, Andrew Jacobs, Jarrell Cox, like all these guys, Romani Alicia, like th these guys are all been like instrumental parts of my training camp. And it's been great, man. Jack Burke, another tall southpaw from the Northeast, like just been crushing camp, man, been getting a lot of big bodies and just prepping myself for for what comes next. So in Sam's debut, he uh he earned the nickname Sam Talvi. He uh mm. he may or may not have held on to the towel to make weight in the uh, Dominican yeah, yeah. Republic. Are you going to mm. make it a point to be present or have a representative present so something like that doesn't happen for y'all's fight? I mean, I also don't think that Sam has ever had issues making weight. Uh if I remember correctly throughout his career, I don't I don't know if he's ever missed weight. Um, I'd have to fact check that, but I also understand that the Dominican Republic was not the easiest place to make weight if you were cutting down from a certain weight. So, you know, I know there was an issue with saunas, an issue with bathtubs, probably problems with food. Like DR is not the best infrastructure for combat sports, you know, when you're a weight class sport. So um, I'm going to give Sam the benefit of the doubt. Uh, would I like to be there and see that he makes weight? Sure. You know, but at the end of the day, if, um, you know, if he misses weight, as long as the title is still vacant, I'm not going to make him suck down. I'd rather just take 20% of his purse, you know, so I'll take some of that money alongside with me. And then uh, as long as I'm still available to win my title, then we're all good. Um, he's going to be bigger than me no matter what. So it really doesn't matter whether it's, you know, two pounds or 20 pounds heavier. I still got to go and do my job. Absolutely. And what did you, what'd you think of his debut? It didn't last very long, but what did you, what no. did you think of his time in the pit? Yeah, he did whatever he wanted. You know, Sam looked like Sam. Um, he was in there with a guy that didn't have uh, as much experience and I believe it's only his second pro fight. You know, he's coming off a loss. So it's like, did he really belong in there with Sam? Probably not at that stage in his career. So, and that's no disrespect to, uh, to Adam, but you know, he, he, he was the person that was the stepping stone for Sam to come in and make a statement and look good so that Sam could be in a position like this to take on someone like me. So yeah, he did whatever he wanted to. Um, I think he's going to have a much more challenging fight ahead of him on Friday. Uh, what would you say is, is one of the advantages Sam has here, if any? I mean, he's, he's big, man. Sam is a big dude. He's, he's, he's not slow. You know, people think, oh, when you say like, oh, he's big, he's going to be bigger than you. That automatically means he's slower than you. Like Sam's all fast twitch. He's snappy. Um, so, you know, does he have more knockout power than me? 
I mean, he said at an interview that I don't finish people. He must have not watched my career at all. Uh, you know, I've got over 50% finish rate in all my fights, and that's not including my amateur fights as well. So, you know, I finish people too. So to say that he has better knockout power than me, I don't really necessarily agree with that. Um, but he's big. He, he's been in, you know, the sport for a very long time. He's seen a lot of different situations and scenarios. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think those are his advantages, just general size if he chooses to use it. Oh, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. So you go out there, you win, you win the heavyweight title. You are the mm -hmm. first ever champ champ in karate combat history. Mm -hmm. Do you go back down to middleweight to defend? Do you stay at 205? Or do you have like a specific name that you want to call out? Or what's next for you? Yeah, I'm I'm certainly available to defend and uh, compete at both weight classes. I have no issues with that. 205 is obviously super easy. 185 is not super chat. Did you hear that snore? That, that was a nice one. She just let out a big old snore. I'm getting tired. Baby just ate. Uh, so, yeah, man, um, 185 is not crazy challenging for me either. Uh, so, you know, I have a, a, an amazing team. You know, my team is great. My nutritionist is unbelievable. So, you know, we do everything we need to do. Um, so it, it's really whatever the better opportunity and the better payday presents itself. I, I really don't have to make any call outs. You know, I know that they've been looking at big names. Uh, Darren Till has crossed my mind um, and has crossed the internet a couple times. Uh, Luke Rockhold, Machida even. So there's a couple names in the works. But, of course, any other rostered fighter that, you know, is able to compete for a title, I'm down, man. You know, I, I've never said no to a fight. I'll never say no to a fight. It's, uh, it's all as, as long as everything adds up and makes sense for me, then we're golden. What is your official prediction for this Friday night? I put him away in a spectacular fashion, as I always do. Awesome. Well, how can people follow you on your journey for the one or two who are not mm. already following you? What are your social media outlets, your Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. So um, my most, uh, the place I put out most of my content, almost all of my content is Instagram. You can follow me at Ross underscore Turbo underscore Levine. That's where you can follow all of my content, both fight related, Turbo Sports Performance related. Um, if you guys need any help, rehab, strength and conditioning, I'm your guy. My team is is the best in the biz. So I'd be happy to help you guys with that as well. Um, Facebook, Ross Levine, athlete page, Ross Turbo Levine, X, Ross Turbo Levine. You can find me on all platforms just like that. And, and feel free to reach out, send me messages, follow along. And then, of course, follow YouTube, right? KC43, Las Vegas, December 15th. If you're there in person, code Ross15 gives you 15% off. We're going to smash this, man. We're going to have a huge crowd. Um, Team Turbo is going to be rocking. And uh, I just can't wait, man. I can't wait to just put the next stamp on my career and move forward and, and continue to do what I've always done. I dig it, man. Oh, well, Ross, thank you so much for joining me. Sam yes, Alvey sir. is on your dinner plate. Champ Champ status is within can't your wait. grasp. KC 43 this Friday night, Las Vegas, Nevada. Have fun out there. Let's go. See you guys. Have a great one.